That's not good feedback. So with Workday Mobile, my first journey into mobile uh, started. And, uh, and I, I literally started loving this uh, space. And, uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in the universe that uh, everything happens for, for the best. And I still enjoy the mobile space. So would you like to talk about how your journey in mobile started? <laughs> I know it's a well, very long journey. It's, it's I, was, a decade no, I, was, I was just this morning talking about how mobile developers are quite weird on their own way because we are fascinated by these small devices with lots of constraints that are very personal and and they are they're quite unique you don't get when you are working on a backend it's a completely different story when you're working on a desktop browser you have a lot of space but mobile is this personal small device with lots of constraints not so much small not so much screen space and it requires a different skill set but it also requires a different mindset and in all these years since I started working on mobile, I've always find that yes, all engineers, all software engineers are weird, but mobile engineers are very particular in, um, in the way they approach problems. And we are we're quite different from the other engineers. So well, what was for me, it was that I, I remember I had one of the first mobile phones, like the, the Nokia 3210, and I had um, an I I'm not an, um, a palm. I had a palm, one of these PDAs, which I still have. I can find it later if you want to see some of my old devices in the museum. And I was thinking, why doesn't someone get this UI into this phone? That would be amazing. And at some point, I got this the opportunity to work with Windows phones, like the very very early Windows phones, which were like very bulky. And they had Wi-Fi when Wi-Fi was not a normal thing. And I started looking at them as like, this is people are trying to put mobile on a on a, a PDA. This, this is not working. Like I have the pound right here. This works. Um, and then I I moved abroad and I started working on Symbian phones because it was the most advanced phones by then. I'm talking about things like the N95 from Nokia when Nokia was the main manufacturer. And I remember it vividly. I saw the announcement for the iPhone. I went to the city of this small company. So like, Mari, I, I want to work on iPhone. So like, I'm sorry, all our clients are working on Symbian. So you have to keep working on Symbian. Like, okay, well, I have to try. A um, few months later, Google announces Android and it's like, it's very similar to iPhone, but it's open source. And I so like, I like this even better. And I went back, Mari, remember what I said about iPhone? Just forget it. I want to work on others, like the same answer as before. We're working on Symbian because it's all, all of our clients want. Uh, then the, re the recession of 2008 came as this company had to uh, let go a lot of people. And my project just finished before the recession. It was very unlucky. Uh, but whenever a door closes, another door opens. So I found another job in the Netherlands in this Dutch social network working on Android and it was like, 2008, I thought social network on phones was going to be a big thing. I was a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. But I got the chance to go there and start working on a social network app on Android, even before the first Android device was actually released. Mm -hmm. And I've been working on Android since. But that one was, was really, really cool. It was a um, cutting edge technology back then. And believe me, you think the phones today are not responsive and, and laggy. If you go back to the original Android, the UI is clumsy, is super laggy all over the place. It doesn't do anything. It's, it was a very, very restrained device, but it was uh, it was completely new thing. Give yeah. me one second. I'm gonna search some devices in my in my uh, drawer over here. I have way too many things, Carol. Yes, I'm sure you do. Uh, ah, here it is. Let me see. So I, I talked to you about the, the first PDA I had. What was this thing? No. 160 pixels by 160 pixels. It doesn't have any internet connectivity. I have to, um, I think, I have, yeah. You have to connect it to in a, in a cradle to actually sync and upload data to it. And it has a resistive screen that it only works with this pen. Right. 
uh, it was it was fantastic i love this device it was it was the first mobile device i actually had yeah. can you believe i read books on this thing on my on my commute to work back in 2000 something i have here this was this is the first android device right like wow. it has like a lot of uh, a lot of keys and it also has a slide in yeah so this one very nice for yep. comparison of size that's a pixel 6 right nice so you can see like the diff how far we've got since then in the, in just a decade amazing Raul, do you still at times use these uh, two devices for any purposes maybe your no, research no, no, no. they're like a i have them i have them for like you know uh what you call it um nostalgia reasons i have them for nostalgia reasons uh, um, this one this one i tried to update it to a newer android version and i bricked it so this one doesn't even boot okay <laughs> but i keep it it was the first android phone ever so yeah. it's kind of a piece of history yeah definitely wow thanks for sharing these devices with us and i'm sure that there are always memories that we have associated with uh, from where we started and now where we are and the journey and the experiences we had on the way. Do you see that a lot has changed in the mobile world when it comes to UX or uh, from the product point of view? Um, what would you highlight as uh, one or two things that you have seen, noticed that the trend has changed? Are you seeing the, the impact influence of AI on mobile? Uh, um, I would say from the that? point of, I don't write that much code anymore as, as a principal, but um, what I've seen finally taking off in the past two years is the switch from the old way we do UI on mobile to this new way that is called declarative UI, that is uh, Swift UI for iOS and uh, Compose for Android, which is much easier. You can write much more complex uh, apps, better UI in a simpler way. It's easier to maintain. Yeah, I think maintainability doesn't sound like an issue until you work for three years in the same company and it comes back to hurt you. <laughs> Why? But yeah, it's a, it's a lot easier to maintain, it's a lot easier to read, it's easier to write. It's a better paradigm overall, and it's the biggest shift I've seen uh, since the introduction of Kotlin and Swift. Okay. It was the, pre the previous biggest milestone on, on mobile. Raul, congratulations on being a principal software developer at Workday. So now as you are a principal uh, dev, so what has changed in this current role in comparison to the previous role? So oh, I you did mention to me that you don't code as much as you used to be. That's, that's fun. Um, I actually read a book called Staff Engineer. This is how it is called in other companies. There's not so much literature about what it actually means to be a principal. And this book goes into several different buckets in which people can fill. And my understanding is that no one knows what a principal does. But if you become a principal, it's because you're doing something good. So you, we want you to do more of that. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is that as a principal, you care about longer vision. You don't care about the results of this sprint or even this quarter. You're, you're looking at, a, at months at the very least. You're looking at not impacting your team, but the entire organization. In my case, it's like a hundred about 100 people in mobile in Worday. So my attempts now is, all my efforts are to, how can we make better software together? How can we all work together? And this is trying to influence uh, practices, it's trying to influence culture. And this doesn't happen in weeks, this happens in months. And as a result, I write a lot less code and I talk a lot more with people.